Okay, Jerry, thanks for doing this interview. Um, as you know, we are uh, trying to observe in some way, at least to contribute to uh, the uh, uh, World Interfaith Harmony Week between uh, the 1st of February and the 7th uh, for the year 2016. So we, for the record, we know what we're doing. And I remember uh, talking to you about your experience uh, living for quite a while in Turkey, obviously a country of a Muslim majority and culture and history, and uh, you being at the time not really in fact a religious person. And we were discussing uh, among the common words, um, you know, culture, honor, respect, and if you could share with uh, uh, our audience uh, globally, I guess, uh, uh, what your thoughts are about um, acquiring a, a mindset, um, an attitude that in fact promotes uh, peace and, uh, and harmony, not just uh, interfaith, but even you could say intercultural. Well, I went there in 2004, and um, before I went, all my American friends said, you shouldn't go, they don't like Americans, but they, they didn't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. They didn't know what Turks were, <laughs> you know, they didn't know anything about Turkey. Right. And I married a Turkish woman, and I uh, moved to Turkey, and uh, I was there for almost five years. Okay. And uh, my experience was that I only experienced um, a problem with one Muslim who disliked me because I was American. There yeah. was a guy who was selling tea, and when he found out I was American, he refused to serve me tea. And that was the only experience, but with everyone else, um, I got along with them well, and I, and I loved being uh, in the Muslim culture. They really loved having me as a guest. What do you think are the um, the features, the, uh, the attitude we need to have to foster harmony oh. that perhaps you try to naturally or or uh, you know or deliberately to develop? Well, I would say that the the Westerners who went to Turkey. They didn't try to learn the language. Um, they didn't try to really explore the culture. Um, they still accepted them in their country and treated them well. Um, but you know, they kind of frowned upon them because they could tell that there was a bit of aloofness yeah. and no real desire to, to get to the culture. And I'm good with languages, and so uh, I found the language beautiful, and I found the music beautiful, and uh, food beautiful. And, uh, so so you they were very happy that I engaged them. Yeah. So you would think people sense if you respect and appreciate and you love their culture? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, they would say, I mean, I happen to be good at like uh, imitating mm -hmm. Turkish culture and like playing with it. Mm -hmm. So the more playful I became, the more playful they became. Yeah. And so they accepted me, yeah. you know, in, in, you know, to their family. Um, when I went there, I wasn't religious, I was an atheist. Yeah. Um, towards the end, I started uh, reading Christian literature, mm -hmm. but um, I would go with the uh, Muslims to the mosques once in a while. Yeah. And uh, I would sit there, and, you know, before going, and, and, you know, wash my ears, sure. and do what they do, and, yeah. and I was just curious about it. And it was nice because there were like quiet spaces mm -hmm. to think. And five times a day, you yeah. call prayer, you know, mm -hmm. call prayer. Mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty, you know, mm -hmm. and aesthetically pleasing. Yeah. But uh, it wasn't until the end that I started you know, experiencing uh, being drawn to Christianity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was funny that one time on a hike, I was up in the mountain and I was reading, uh, I think it was, is it Jeremiah? Is it in Jeremiah when it says, I will write my law on their hearts? Yes. Is it Jeremiah? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I read that and it struck me. And, you know, I kind of like, you know, pray, write your law on my heart. Yeah. I don't know if it was right before that or right after I said that, that I heard the call of prayer in the distance. Yeah. So it's this Muslim prayer interweaving with my Christian spiritual experience. Yeah. And I remember feeling, you know, a powerful feeling. And I think that, uh, I think one of the greatest ways towards like harmony and understanding is you know, between Muslim and Christian is that uh, you ex you're open to the, to the fact there's a possibility that Muslims may be able to teach us to pray, and we may be able to teach Muslims to pray, and that, that uh, 
So when your so hearts are open, open, yeah. You have some kind of contact. Mm -hmm. So uh, a form of humility and uh, respect. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very true. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time. That was very uh, helpful. I'm glad you're uh, you're here with us in California for this uh, for this week as we do various events here and uh, around the world. And I think it was a useful uh, account because uh, often people have ideas about uh, what they will experience, how people will perceive them, how they will be treated. And I think from prejudice and fear comes all the wrong, the wrong uh, features. And so I think hearing stories like this uh, can be very helpful and, and push the dynamic in the right direction of respect. And uh, um, that's what I, I hope this week will, yeah. will convey. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right.